Slow ahead. I can go slow ahead. Come on down and chump some of this shit. Do you remember the first time you saw Jaws? Is that still in oh, your brain? Tell me a little bit about it. First time I saw Jaws, um, I was six years old. I saw it on its original release in 1975. I was six, almost seven. And my parents were really cool with, you know, letting me see films that I really wanted to see. I grew up on Universal Classic Monsters, and I saw the image of that giant shark and that poster. And I think young kids know two things are really cool, dinosaurs and sharks. Didn't know anything else about it except it was a shark, and uh, went and saw it, and it changed my world. What, when did the, the doc for the Blu-ray kind of start going? Um, well, I was creative director for a celebration called Jaws Fest on Martha's Vineyard, which was fantastic, and uh, Universal was there. And, you know, as the creative director, I found that there was really a lot of stories that had not been told yet, especially on the island of Martha's Vineyard. And uh, I thought, you know, I have the access and uh, the wherewithal, so I put a, put a team together with some of my closest friends and we said, let's just do it. We didn't have a contract in place. We didn't have anything. It was just a labor of love. And we started getting these really compelling stories from the locals that are still on Martha's Vineyard. You know, Lee Fiera, who plays Mrs. Kentner, has been there. Uh, Edith Blake, all these great people were cast. That's why that film has such great local color. And then also we started to find people like Roger Castell, who painted the, the original art, advertising art for the book and then the movie. And his story had never been told. And then Percy Rodriguez, who was the narration, the voiceover for that great trailer in the 70s. It really was kind of the gateway for us, you know, and really set us up. So it was like, let's, let's talk about that. Let's not just talk about the making of the film, because Laurent Bouzereau's documentary was fantastic. And that's on the Blu-ray, which I love. That's on the Blu-ray in ours. And it, we were always wanted it to be a companion piece to that. So it really feels like it is. And this is about the impact of that film in 1975 and the long-lasting legacy even today, where you have filmmakers uh, who cite that film as the reason they got into making film, and shark researchers who wanted to be Matt Hooper and have spent a life just uh, shark research and conservation. Um, I know for me personally, I was I was really excited to see about the artist who painted the, uh, the poster, just because I was like, oh, are they gonna get to him? I've always kind of wondered what was up with that. Um, for you though, what, what was kind of the, the choicest gem that you think you discovered in this process that's made it in, uh, into the dock? Um, the coolest thing for me personally uh, was having the time with Steven Spielberg and just watching him be a movie geek and enjoy talking about the film and enjoy talking about how Jaws changed films. And then also working with Roy Scheider. Roy narrated the documentary for us, which was fantastic. And Roy became a champion for the documentary. Um, and then also just really getting to know a lot of these people personally and becoming friends. Um, it's fantastic to me, you know, they've all seen the documentary and we felt an ownership to tell those stories and to make sure they were comfortable with the way we were telling the story. And we got great reviews all around. Um, maybe go back a little bit. Can you talk about how you started the Jaws Fest thing in Martha's Vineyard? That's a really, I had no idea that was going on. And as yeah. a Jaws fan, it just seems beyond cool. Well, that's, that's what's cool is, you know, uh, Star Wars and Star Trek has had conventions for years, but Jaws has a very passionate fan base. I, I mean, I dare you to find anyone that does not love Jaws or at least was impacted or affected deeply by that film. But there are people out there who love the film like myself, and Martha's Vineyard has relatively been left untouched all these years. So it's one of the few opportunities where you can actually go and walk the film set. It's the same. You're still walking the streets of Amity. There's Amity Town Hall. All those scenes that you saw in the film are right there. And, you know, you can't do that with other film locations. It's very rare. You can't, you know, once the set's gone, it's gone. But there it is, and it's a great, great opportunity for fans to go. I, I strongly recommend everybody go to Martha's Vineyard if you love the movie Jaws. Get your Blu-ray, watch the scene you like, and then set it up and replicate that moment right in real life. As a kid who's seen that movie in 1975, what do you think that kid would have thought if you told him, hey, someday there's gonna be, they're gonna release the movie uh, and you're gonna be part of that? 
the irony of that is not lost on me. Uh, of all the people in this world who love that movie, if you'd have told me some, you know, 35 years later that I would now be associated with the mythology of Jaws, I would never have believed you. Um, I, it's very fortunate, and it's just a testament again to it, it's a great it's a great film, um, and it really it really has been a cornerstone. It, it, it affected the way movies were released. It affected artists who want to make films. It, it's kind of a textbook, you know. It, it's just everything was perfect. It was like a lightning in a bottle. And uh, but I feel incredibly fortunate to be able to be a small, small part of that.